Hello again, and thank you for joining us. I'm Tara Lynn Wagner, and once again, I am here in the EDRMA Global Booth at the American Society of Reproductive Medicine Conference in San Antonio. We're doing these Facebook Live conversations all day, and as I've said before, we want you to get involved in them, so please send us your questions or comments, and we will try to address those live. And as always, this uh, video is just for informational purposes only. It is not used for any diagnostic purpose, so please, if you have any questions, you should contact your doctor. So joining me now to talk a little bit about some of the research that's being presented, and there's lots of research being presented lots at the conference here, is Dr. Thomas Molinaro. Thank you so much for being it's here. It's a pleasure to be here. So we talked a little bit earlier today about PGS testing, but for folks who hadn't seen that video, let's just go over the basics of it before yep. we get to what your actual findings were. What What is PGS testing? So PGS testing stands for pre-implantation genetic screening. It's a way to examine embryos to see if they have the right number of chromosomes. Humans have 46 chromosomes, 23 come from the mother and 23 come from the father, and so uh, sometimes in embryos we find that they inherit the wrong number of chromosomes. These chromosomes, most often, they don't implant. Um, these embryos, if they do implant, most often result in miscarriage. Rarely can they result in a baby with a problem, right. like Down syndrome. So we know that our infertility patients, especially as they get older, are more prone to these mistakes. And part of making IVF more efficient is using techniques like PGS to better identify the embryo that has the single best chance of resulting in a baby. So what we're looking at here is if, if you we're transferring these embryos that have not been screened and that maybe have one of these abnormalities to them, then as you mentioned, it could be a miscarriage or it would just, it'll be a failed attempt at, at, at fertilization so um, or implantation. So what we're looking at here is shortening the time that it, would, it may take. Absolutely. So part of... Part of the draw of uh, CCS is that it allows us to better identify healthy embryos up front. Um, what that means is that patients get pregnant quicker. It also means that we don't have to transfer multiple embryos, right? So for so many years, infertility treatments and IVF were associated with twins, triplets, worse, right? Um, but now that we've done a, such a good job of figuring out which embryos are not going to implant, we can sort of concentrate on the um, healthy embryos. We can transfer one embryo at a time, get very high success rates, over 60% in most age groups, and you know avoid the risk of twins or triplets or other higher order multiples. And without getting into all the specifics, yep. I mean, those single embryo transfer, you're avoiding a whole host of problems, both in terms of, because multiple births, Absol there's problems absolutely. for the babies, there's problems for the mother, right. it's, a, it's a big issue. Right, absolutely. And you know, the, the idea here is that we really want to have one healthy baby at a time. We don't want to exchange one problem for another. You know, to go from infertility to preterm delivery or mm. Premature mm -hmm. birth, all of these maternal complications that are associated with it as well. So the PGS, the uh, the um, pre-implantation genetic right. screening, I would imagine that there's a cost associated with this. Is this an optional thing for patients? Right. They can choose whether they want it or not. Right, it definitely is um, optional. Um, it does add a little bit to the cost of IVF. Um, we're working. Uh, in our state in particular to try to uh, influence insurance coverage uh, to, you know, so that patients who have coverage for IVF will also have patients for um, PGS. At some point that may happen in the next few years, we're optimistic. You know, there's lots of great data that came out of our clinic and other clinics that just look at the cost effectiveness of uh, using PGS, um, you know, especially when you take into account the cost of having multiples, right? Having twins or triplets, um, you know, as part of our best trial where we transferred um, one single genetically tested embryo at a time, you know, we, we saw that there were um, you know much lower costs through the entire pregnancy <laughs> through the first 30 days of life um, and so you know this cost effectiveness data is really important for insurance companies to sort of say well you know actually this small investment up front pays dividends way down the line so what did you find then when you're addressing your patients um, in the study that, that you've presented here at the conference you, you talk to patients and you give them this option what did you find are they taking it or are they not so it's interesting as one of our one of our many projects that we had at ASRM here uh, was looking at how insurance coverage affects a, a couple's decision whether or not to use um, PGS. And what we found is that patients who were paying out of pocket um, were roughly about 10% more likely to use PGS than patients who were covered by insurance. Um, you know, so that's interesting because what, what that means is the ones who are already paying for, for for the procedure in the first place, which can be very expensive, right. they're willing to pay this additional cost as opposed to the ones who might have it covered. Right, and I, you know, we hypothesized a bunch of different reasons why this might be the case. Um, you know, I think at some point these patients are probably doing more homework, trying to understand, um, you know, what their what their dollars getting them, mm -hmm. and they understand, I think, that a little more investment up front 
increases their chances for success, reduces their risk of complications, and ultimately shortens their time to pregnancy, which, um, you know, in a dollars and cents kind of way is sure. really, really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you would think, though, that for insurance companies, as you mentioned, if you're right. working with them, you would think that they would understand this as well and realize that rather than having to help a couple pay for three rounds, four rounds of IVF, we might be able to shorten that and save ourselves some money. Right. Right. And so, I mean, I think that they're starting to come around to it. Part of the problem is that for a really long time, only a very small fraction of IVF centers were even capable of doing PGS. Mm -hmm. So it, it wasn't something that was garden variety on the street. Obviously, um, they're not going to pay for um, procedures that are considered experimental. So over the last you know, 10 years, really, RMA has been at the forefront, um, and EVRMA has been at the forefront of um, doing the studies to provide evidence so that it's no longer experimental. This really is the standard of care. You know, we feel like there are enough good studies out there demonstrating the safe, safetyness, the effectiveness of using extended embryo culture, so trans culturing to the blastocyst stage, doing PGS, genetic screening, of embryos and then transferring one embryo at a time. So I think it's just a, it's just a matter of time before we get insurance companies on our side. I know you and I have talked about some of the the costs related to IVF in the right. in the past. Um, is there help available? Are, are there programs available to help cover this particular aspect of it? So. Uh, you know, there's always different ways to finance IVF. You know, over the course of the years that I've been practicing, I've seen patients do tremendous things, changing insurance, changing jobs, moving from one state to another to try to improve their coverage. You know, I've, patients, you know, sometimes have to finance this. You know, at RMA of New Jersey, uh, we use a, a program called um, CareShare, which um, not everybody qualifies for, but if you're a good prognosis patient, you know, basically you um, have the opportunity to, um, you know, go into a, a, a risk-sharing program where if you don't get pregnant, we give you your money back. And that does include CCS it or does. PGS. It does, so it includes all Absolutely. of that with it. Amazing. Um, so aside from this, I know you've been attending a lot of these sessions, uh, the breakaway sessions here at the conference. Is there anything that you're particularly excited about learning here? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of great research looking at the next level of embryo diagnostics, trying to figure out how do we pick a better embryo. So chromosome screening was the you know, this um, ultimate um, final frontier for so long. Um, and now that we've sort of perfected that, you know, um, group of testing uh, paradigms, now we're looking at how do we figure out the metabolism of our embryos? How do we figure out more about, um, you know, the interaction with the uterus at implantation? So that's really, really great. I think we're also seeing more and more research about male factor and fertility, trying to understand the contribution of the sperm. Um, for a really long time, we sort of overlooked the guys um, because we don't need too much from them, right? Um, but I think uh, there's some interesting research coming out of EVRMA and a bunch of other centers looking at better uh, diagnostics and therapies for our, our male factor individuals as well. So there's lots of interesting and exciting um, you know, breakthroughs in our field. And, uh, you know, I'm happy every single day. I know that, you know, I picked the right choice for a career. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for spending a few minutes Great. with Dr. Molinaro. Awesome. And again, we're going to continue to have these Facebook conversations throughout the day. We have a few coming up this afternoon, so continue to check back, please, with our Facebook page, and you will be able to catch those and leave us your comments and questions. We'll try to get to them. Thanks so much.